Uh, hi everyone. Today I will present our work on. Uh, uh, work on the countering malicious process with the Process DNS Association. This work is the collaboration of researchers in uh, NSC labs and uh, interns from the uh, Columbia University and Princeton University. I am Kang Gukji from NSC labs, and the first author, Esufani Sibakon, mostly contributed this research, but unfortunately she couldn't make it, so I'm. Um, I'm presenting this work for her behalf. Okay, so DNS is not only the foundational service of the internet, uh, but an important attack vector that critical in establishing their channel to the attack infrastructures. Many attacks has been um, sorry. So many attacks has their defenses and and attacks and their defenses are proposed and implement, implemented already from the previous researches, but the. The most shared is the one of the promises that malicious domain queries always indirectly equate to the malicious behaviors. Based on these um, assumptions, actually traditional DNS defenses uh, sit on the network level outside the host, um, such as like a firewalls and IDS that monitors and blocks the any suspicious DNS traffic. Um, largely, we have the two different approaches to examine and filter the suspicious DNS traffic. Firstly, based on the simple and straightforward blacklistings. And secondly, is more. Yeah, secondly, is more on the uh, dynamic uh, uh, DNS detection to counter advanced uh, like attackers who register the new domains um, in a transient manner in an effort to cripple the detections. And then, actual dynamic DNS defense uh, refers to the more meta information of the DNS, like uh, such as IP and then geolocations and name string structures and TLs. I think why these two has been a long been a major battlefield for the DNS researches, but the game has changed a bit due to the uh, evolution of the modern internet. Okay, so DNS like operations are getting more more like uh, stealthier. Of <laughs> Um, yeah, to overcome the uh, advances of the up-to-date defenses, the attacker has come up with the more advanced like uh, attack vectors, um, such as like uh, tactics that would uh, blend their uh, malicious like uh, connection into the benign traffic to the public web services. Famous like uh, attack vector like a uh, hosting service, like a uh, hosting uh, like a uh, MITRE's ATTKNCK, dedicated a single like uh, section to refer to these categories. Um, I'm sorry, let me fix it. <laughs> this is automatically sold. Okay, uh, maybe it should be fine. On the other hand, actually, we have another like a push uh, to provide the, the privacy and secrecy support for the DNS queries by the HTTP encryption. And then this transition is largely backed by the big internet services um, who are motivated by their desire to collect their direct DNS queries from the end users rather than volume aggregate by the uh, DNS reservoirs. So the existing DNS solution cannot distinguish such traffic by sitting just outside the host. And we want to propose a host level DNS solution that would monitor the uh, DNS queries along with the responsible, uh, uh, their responsible DNS like uh, processes and programs. Okay, and then what is the actually benefit of this approaches? And to catch up, actually, we want to propose the um, the the new defense system that narrow down the monitoring scope from the network to host. Eventually, to look up the into the each and process into the DNS queries. Um, the yeah, this gives us the number of benefits. Actually, process and domain queries um, give us the detailed look of the. Uh, the process and domain relationship, and we can extend it from the host level features like uh, code signing, software uh, publisher, loaded DNS, command line arguments. And actually, uh, based on this thing, for existing features, we can do the, uh, the individual analysis for the uh, network level features, such as domain names, domain registration durations, and uh, domain detail seen from can be seen from the, pre uh, the process level. Um, actually, from as you can see, uh, from the 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 uh, this example, actually, um, this can be um, the the query to the uh, Twitter and GitHub and the uh, Dropbox. They are made from the malware, but uh, this cannot seen from the network level, but only seen from the inside the host when it is associated with the actual process that is in, uh, the the initiating such a queries. 
And then we want to uh, introduce the PDNS, uh, not the passive, but the process and DNS association. This is actually implements the DNS service uh, inside the host. Actually, this uh, figure depicts the Windows like uh, DNS query behaviors, which actually de dedicates the DNS service um, that caches the, uh, the DNS queries for the old processes on behalf. From here, actually, we uh, implement the sensor uh, that intercepts the, uh, the DNS calls uh, IPC DNS, uh, IPC calls uh, between the DNS services and processes, and actually um, the uh, refers to the system service to get the system information, such as um, the the uh, signedness of the binary, um, loaded libraries, and command lines, and so on. And then these informations are actually reported to the backend. And then backend should further extend its information by referring to the outside service, like uh, uh, external who is, IP locations, and so forth. And then later, actually, this is um, the cross-checked with the uh, uh, systems, actually, internal services, like, uh, in, uh, in, in, enterprise services, like uh, DNS histories and the file logs, to um, the prevent um, the attackers from the taking over the end host and server the PDNS monitorings. And then let's talk about the, our uh, data set. We deployed the P PDNS to our like uh, NS Labs enterprise, which covers a two, 126 Windows workstation and for over a six months period of time. Actually, over that time, we uh, collected 130 million DNS requests. And then actually, um, the, these older processes uh, that we observed are actually cross-checked with their hashes into the uh, virus total uh, service in order to make sure that these are all benign like uh, uh, environment. Also, we actually checked with the, uh, the collected the malware data set from the multiple sources over the multiple durations, durations of time. And um, actually, um, the 2015-2017, actually we collected a number of the, uh, the, uh, the malwares to um, uh, from the uh, these sources, and these are mo mainly used to uh, train the model and then uh, build up the model for the detection. And then actually, we also uh, collect the more latest the more sets to actually uh, the confirm the, the the detection power of the uh, models. And then these actually um, the malware are basically executed from the sandbox environment. Actually, we originally collected much more like. Uh, uh, the malware, but uh, in order to make sure that they run properly from the sandbox and then filter out the, uh, the, the malware that doesn't make a DNS uh, service, that we put the, some kind of effort to make sure that all things are correct, uh, co uh, co uh, collected in a proper way. And then uh, with this uh, framework, we collected three different types of information. Uh, first one is external from the uh, first one is from the external sources uh, that is for the DNS queries, and then another one is internal sources inside the host that is related to the process and program that actually queries the uh, the, uh, the the program that queries the DNS, and the last one is actually cross checking, cross comparing. Uh, features from the different sources. In total, actually, we examined the 61 uh, malware samples, uh, 61 features. I uh, said, so let's go over the uh, each of uh, the the sources and that they're like a specific, um, they're specific um, the more no noteworthy features. Actually, first we showed the network and DNS related features, and noted that uh, the these um, the features are well studied by previous researchers. We only revisit this from the context of the process rather than the each host. We gather the extensive, I'm, I'm really sorry, but uh, it is <laughs> going automatically moving on, so. Timing. So can you, okay, it, it is really kind of, do you know, um, Disable timing. Slide show. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, this was really kind of <laughs> surprising. Okay. Maybe. Uh, hope. Yeah, I hope this this really solves. Uh, sorry about the uh, the uh, confusion. Okay, so uh, let me calm down a bit. Okay, I am slow down a bit, I think. <laughs> okay, yeah, it was just automatically moving forward, so I was really surprised. Uh, 
<laughs> okay, so I was kind of juggling my presentation and then slide showing. So actually, okay, I hope that I delivered properly what we, tr what we are trying to do and then what we implemented, uh, how we collect the data from the, our deployment. Then actually, I'm gonna talk about the, um, the information sources that we detect, uh, that we actually collect the information. One is the external sources that we gather. That is the external means the outside the host. That is about the DNS. And then it is its related queries. And then this thing, as you can see, each DNS queries are actually referred to the outside like uh, information source, like uh, who is DNS, who is IP, who is IP geolocations, and so on. So these bring in a lot of like information, interesting information. And then actually this is one, of, among those features, this is one of the noteworthy features. Actually one, uh, this is indicative that um, the, uh, indicative one is the domain duration, uh, uh, domain registration duration. Actually this result is consistent to the previous reported result that the attacker like uh, registered the malicious domain for the shorter duration time for the hit that run nature. Actually the, sh uh, the CDF in the bottom uh, compares the registration duration among the benign data uh, shown in the solid line, solid black line, and then two malicious data set uh, respectively from the uh, 2015 and 2017 uh, shown in the dotted line in the red ones. The next one is the, about the internal source that is related to the processes and programs. And then this actually includes the static artifacts such as signedness and then signing organizations and the runtime aspect such as loaded details and command line arguments. And these are to capture basically the runtime behavior of programs such as how much of the user controls over the, this process. And actually, um, does it have the GUI co component? Uh, does this is handled by the actual user input? Or the, does it encrypt, uh, encry like uh, does it include the encrypted functionality and so on? And and one of the very interesting feature that we would see from this kind of the feature set is the domain failure rate. Actually, a domain failure rate is related to domain queries, but the, this kind of behavior is not seen from the outside, especially when on the, actually the OS system like Windows involves the uh, domain broker service in the middle. Uh, such a behavior is transient to the PDNS, uh, 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 such a behavior is very transparent to the DNS sensors, uh, resulting in showing the clear distinction between the benign and malicious data queries from the CDF shown the below. Okay, uh, last one is the integrated feature for this one. We try to associate, uh, we try to associate the different features to find the previously hidden correlation and invariance. And one feature that we propose here is the correlation between the program publisher and information and domain registrant. Okay, so uh, while the more and more like Windows programs are and malware are signed, actually with the legitimate signatures, this is to like a bypass a simple whitelisting uh, approaches, and then we can define the owner domains for a given program or programs mostly uh, they are belongs to. For instance, actually Chrome goes to the. Uh, the, the Google, and then Firefox goes to Mozilla Foundation. And then most of, many of the service host domains actually bound to the Microsoft. As we calculate the string distance between the binary publisher and domain registrant, I, I actually we can see the way stronger like a correlation from the benign data set over the malware data set. I think this like a result uh, has a two implication. One is like a, the, just, just a straightforward a funky behavior malware that goes just random places. And then second one is more kind of interesting insight that sophisticated attack tactics that would like uh, inject malicious logic into the well-trusted system processes like a uh, um, service host. So while the service host is signed by Microsoft, they can go to the places just anywhere. Okay, so uh, model training. So last one, um, actually we uh, trained the model uh, with the, uh, our data set is kind of highly un in, uh, unbalanced and we employ the standard practice of smooth uh, techniques to address the oversampling and undersampling. And then actually once the data is normalized, uh, we trained it with a different like uh, uh, the machine learning techniques. And for hyperparameters, actually our approach implement uh, implemented the exhaustive grid search. And finally, we evaluated with a tenfold uh, cross validation and measured the true positive, first positive, and then ROC for the precision recall. And then we also ranked the predicative power of the each feature in terms of the MDI. Okay, uh, here's the detection accuracy uh, for uh, actually different data sets uh, that collected by the PDNS. And then we did the first uh, uh, tenfold validation uh, for the uh, data sets of 2015 and 2017 and both combined. 
And in overall, actually, um, the random forest performed the best, and the KNN and neural network followed. And uh, ROC curve also showed a consistent result, and then true positive rate was um, near to like 99%, uh, and first positive was close to zero. And then actually, we used the same model trained with the 2015 and 2017 data set, and we just applied it to the never, uh, uh, previously unseen data set, which is 2018 data set. And it showed uh, like a similar um, the detection power. Uh, therefore, it confirms the effectiveness of our approaches. We also approached this, um, the okay, uh, this to the, <laughs> Uh, our um, the environment, uh, and then actually we seen the only like a, a, a 146 uh, first positive over six months period of time, and then these are mostly from the browsers, and then we ranked the future importance actually uh, for uh, future future uh, 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 future importance uh, like a result. Please refer to our like uh, um, uh, paper for the detailed list. But um, those show the um, a different result for the different like uh, data sets, but the, uh, our uh, newly proposed data sets, which are shown in the blue, dark blue uh, region, those are consistently important for those cases. And then our actually capability of the detecting stealthy attack was shown with, uh, by using the previously um, the reported the famous like uh, hematos attacks, and this was uh, the uh, uh, discovered and reported the Firefox. Uh, uh, Fire Eye in 2015, and um, the highlighted feature of the this array is that communicates the, its command and control only using the benign web service such as GitHub, Twitter, and public storage services for its drop site. And then our uh, we uh, ran it as a zero-day fashion, and then we could successfully detect it. <coughs> okay, so takeaways: actually, PDNS is an endpoint. Um, the DNS solution uh, that captures the domain queries along with the processable. Therefore, we can increase the visibility of monitoring, and then it is capable of detecting stealthy malware attacks. Okay, so attackers can come back. Uh, this is like a cat and mouse game with a more like a malware evasion uh, techniques. They can forge the DNS activities. They can load uh, load the, uh, some unexpected details, and then avoid the DNS queries only using the IPs. But uh, we can also enhance the uh, host space features to cope with this, and then we can always improve the and update the model uh, to better catch up this kind of attack trend. Okay, thanks a lot, and I will take questions. discussion on mm -hmm. the evasion, uh, possible evasion yes. method. Could you comment on the difference between uh, the evasion technique between this uh, this kind of uh, endpoint DNS solution to the traditional DNS solution? Like the difference between the Actually, the, uh, most of the, the, I think most common challenges shared by the endpoint solution uh, is that actually uh, the attacker can have a control over the host at any cases. In this case, we um, the compared to the like uh, centralized network solution, it has its own like uh, limitations. So therefore, there should be one way to cross check the validity, or the another way to deal with such uh, the attack is uh, uh, evasion is uh, to do the um, collaborative effort to deal with the. Uh, uh, defense uh, to defend such evasion attempts. Yes. 